Talier of Weiras, the runaway queen, the thief, the arms dealer, the uniter of Tamriel. Um, we are actually doing cooking with the queen. I'm very excited to be doing that. Um, 26 years ago, 27? My father and I beta tested for um, Bethesda. My father was at Tosh, he passed away recently. So I'm going back through um, the realms and the lore and all of that. Um, Tamriel, obviously, being the focus for anybody who hasn't played the games. Um, we are doing two side dishes and a main dish. So we decided on grilled leeks for the second side dish because um, they're mentioned during several of the recipes in the book, which is the Elder Scrolls cookbook. They do also have the Fallout 76 and everything like that, but this is the one where I'm actually in the video game, so I decided to go with it. For grilled leeks, although leeks can be a little finicky to grow, it's no wonder they thrive all around the Riverlands and Skyrim. This rugged vegetable is popular in stews and savory pies, but it is also delicious in its own right and can often be spied gracing the tables of the rich and the poor alike. So um, very, very straightforward. As you can see right here, it turns out quite savory. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and try our hand at cooking and you can come along. It's actually remarkably easy to do. Okay, so um, as you can see, we are all set to go ahead and start putting the leeks together. Like I mentioned, this is the world's easiest recipe. We did just happen to need leeks for the salmon, so um, they don't come in bundles of five, they come in bundles of three. And I didn't feel like being quite that over in our portioning, um, so what we're going to do is actually cook a smaller amount of the side. So we have the um, water here coming to a boil. We have where we're going to rinse it because I'm going to do that on camera. It's such a simple process that I decided to do, include all of it. This recipe is incredibly straightforward. So um, what we're going to do is cut off the bottom portion of the leek. Now in the recipe it says um, my ex-husband had the world's best chef knife and I have not replaced it yet so I've been using paring knives for everything and I really just have to go out and get that. So. This is technically our waste. You can use it for different things, um, but you like soups and whatnot. Um, you can make a base out of most things that are veiny. Now they say don't separate the bottom because that will help keep it together um, because they are going to be cut in half. So we're going to slice these in half. And this is where a chef's knife would come in handy. But a paring knife will do in a pinch because it is still very sharp even though it doesn't have the unbalanced handle. So I'm mostly at a loss when it comes to chopping, which is fine. We're only going to boil these for five minutes, but we'll still go ahead and cut. I will not make you go through my esoteric cooking knowledge to that degree. I did finally find some sort of stand for my phone. Um, simply because my hands, um, I talk a little bit more with my hands than I thought. So I noticed that on my mobile, uh, mobile games especially, at first I was like, I know that I'm not that shaken. Like, I have steady hands normally. And on camera, I noticed that I was moving around quite a bit. So, you know, obviously that was shocking to me. It's not the end of the world if this isn't perfect. Because um, we are, as you can see, getting some steam already. So we're going to boil that off real fast. Um, but you don't really want to boil it with dirt, so, you know, do your best here. <laughs> That's why when they said, don't cut off the bottoms, and I was like, this is a tuber, essentially. You know, the portion that you eat was underground, so those are notorious for, you know, needing a lot of cleaning. You even peel potatoes if you want to do mashers, because it's just slightly more hygienic. It's not that you can't leave them in, it's you gotta leave them to soak and so on. You do soak for mashers anyways, but I'm sorry, mashed potatoes. I'm using kids' words here, you can tell how long I've been cooking for. Um, potatoes. Alright, so we've mostly got these rinsed off and whatnot. But yeah, so I noticed that the camera was moving and I realized as I watched that I was actually stopping myself from talking with my hands. And as a result, I had um, a very slight, um, you would call it a stammer, I guess, since it's talking with your hands. Um, and that shook the camera back and forth a little bit. Um, then you would see it slightly larger as I began to gesticulate and I would let some of that come through or whatever. Um, did not realize, we had a friend of the family who was Sicilian. I didn't realize that I had adopted that much of their culture. 
How about that? And this is working fairly well to use it like a cleaning brush to get the dirt out there. Obviously, as a girl, I have long hair. We have many methods of being beautiful for you guys. All right, I think that's about as clean as that's going to get. One more. I know that they're brown at the bottom, but I don't want any dirt in there. As you can see, we've got a lot of sediment. So we go ahead and we boil those for five minutes. We are going to replace this with ice water because they do go into an ice water bath. So go ahead and rinse that out very thoroughly. Just create a nice ice water bath for them. It doesn't have to be too much water. There's not many leaks, like I said. It does call for four. I need one whole one for the fish recipe. There's really nothing to mise en place with this. Um, I looked it up and it's used both with and without a hyphen. Generally without a hyphen. So um, that is apparently a phrase and not a word um, to most people, to most cooks. So we'll go ahead and call it a phrase. It's the French phrase, everything in its place. Um, and they're just, like I said, this is such a straightforward recipe. You've got the leeks, you've got olive oil that they fry in, and then you have, you know, obviously salt and pepper to taste. Is <laughs> If you don't know that one, then you're probably new to cooking. So this is great for you. And then the Parmesan cheese is a garnish, which is a great garnish. Um, shredded is best when it's a garnish. I did just go out and buy, you know, um, the usual pan of it because I love it for um, cheese dishes if I'm going to use a dressing for my pita or whatever to go into. So we're running towards the five minute mark, so I'm gonna go ahead and give y'all a cut. And that way you don't have to wait for the leeks cooking. So we'll be right back. Okay, so we have, um, as you can see, the pan is heating up and then we have the leeks right here. They're in a they're nice um, ice water bath and they've cooled off and so on. So what we're going to do is slice off the root end and then we're going to put them into fry. Now two of these are going to go aside. So even though it's at a wide pan, um, we are not doing that. We're using a smaller one. So do listen to them. And also I apologize for the quality of my olive oil. It is extra virgin and it is good. It's um, Berrio, which is a good mid-grade. Um, <laughs> Sasha is not a gourmand, unlike apparently myself. Um, and when you argue with a Russian and American, it's um, polite to use objects. It is apparently not quite as polite to use comstables. So random thing that I found out. If you do decide to date or befriend somebody from Russia, then if you argue buying tchotchke or whatever that is, you know, expressive of what you really meant or whatever you know whether or not it's you know like even they'll take a downgrade if it like brings you to an understanding um moms or aunts do that with clothing especially around christmas um but not with food so do not make my mistake and buy lower grade olive oil because you're aggravated that somebody doesn't want you know cuisine 24 7 and that's perfectly happy with you know, lower grade for it. That's their choice. So, okay. So I have the oil heating up. I've had this pan heating, um, you know, for a minute. So we're going to set aside two of them because those dough, those dough, those do go into the salmon. So that's for the salmon recipe. And then we're just going to cook off these. So this is all waste. I'll go ahead and throw that out. This we'll use for the bakers because we do still have the big double stuffed baked potato. Both of those um, look to me as though they would go well with the salmon, but I think I'm going to go with a side of leeks for it, um, simply because there's a puff pastry on it. I'm waiting for my oil to heat up here because it's like right there and I know it, but I want to get the sizzle. And it's not quite shimmering. Um, the oil will actually, I don't know if it'll show on the camera. See how it shimmers when I move it back and forth? You're looking for it to do that when it's stationary. That's when it's beginning to absorb flavor. So that's an incredible time to drop a food into it and get a great sear on it. Oh, she's starting to sizzle. Okay, so. I had a friend. Okay, I'm calling on for here. Okay. 
I had a friend who used to cook bacon with no apron. Considered himself brave. So we'll take a look here. So what we're actually doing is searing these off. Now it does say put side down and cook for several minutes until they're starting to brown, transfer to a serving plate. So um, I did heat it the way that I had been taught, which you put in immediate sear on it, and it may take a minute or two to cook. So um, stuff like this is when you're gonna notice the quality of, for instance, your olive oil. Um, let me go ahead and rinse this while we're cooking. Because we do want a nice clean serving plate, even though we do have the two to the side. It was just a very nice before and after, so. There's, you know, presentation. We'll go for before and after, which is perfectly fine. That's acceptable. So. Let's take a peek and see if they're browning. Mm, they are. I might flip them, despite the fact that it's not in the instructions simply to make sure they get an all over cook. Now they said put them in the ice water to preserve color. And you can see where it has a lovely green color. In the book, it does show, I'll bring it around here. I do keep it on the other side. In this one, it was very impossible to not tell you the ingredients because it was so simple. You can leave off the measurements and that's about it, honestly. But as you can see, they're a slightly brownish color. And then they're, the pepper I will leave off because I'm allergic. Um, but you do always salt and pepper to taste. Um, so Parmesan, it's supposed to have a nice sear on it. That's that brown right there that's called a sear. And um, it looks like you do cook it down. Now maybe they wanted to preserve the color um, because it ends up so brown that um, it's actually just more attractive to have more of that green at the beginning. So let's see if we have a sear or if we're gonna go for a cut here. I did use above the recommended oil. So if you are eyeballing it, which is very difficult given that I used a smaller pan, if you are eyeballing it, um, try to avoid that or compensate for it if you're just that good. Um, because I'll, for instance, use more oil when I'm doing a cooking video on the off chance that I can cook them all the way through while I'm still on camera. This is going to require a cut. So we will be right back. Okay, I went ahead and moved that back. Um, so we are fried off with a nice sear here. We'll go ahead and flip that onto the presentation plate. Um, I'm pretty good at guessing when a sear goes in. You don't have to stare at my, I moved the camera. I um, moved my television over because I'm planning on moving my exercise bike. And um, yeah, I couldn't get the, PlayStation working, so all the wires and whatnot are sticking out. I didn't realize it. So sorry if you caught that in the video, friend. Um, okay, so then we do salt since it's for presentation. Um, presentation to me includes flavor. So definitely, definitely, definitely with the salt mill, um, you want that coarse consistency. It really just adds something to it. Um, on the downside, since I glanced at the instructions, and then at the picture, and those are always prettier. I did not think to grab um, Parmesan, like a block of Parmesan. So we are going to have Parmesan sprinkles here, which is fine. It's no big deal. So there are your grilled leeks. And those, if you're interested in the lore, although leeks can be a little finicky to grow, it's no wonder they thrive around all of the riverlands in Skyrim. This rugged vegetable is popular in stews and savory pies, but it's also delicious in its own right and can be a, often be spied gracing the tables of the rich and the poor alike. So here's the poor man's version <laughs> with middle grade olive oil and the crushed Parmesan. But honestly, if you try it, I think you'll find it's amazing. So that was easier than you thought. I hope that you enjoyed coming along for the ride and doing a little bit of cooking around Tamriel. Um, we will be putting the videos up one by one. We also still do video game reviews. We're still a beta tester, so hit the subscribe button, smash it. Tell all your friends that they can find everything that's awesome in gaming and what to play next. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video, and as always, 
Much love.